Today we're going out of this world and building this alien-inspired, retro-futuristic cocktail table. Or is it a bar height table? A cabaret? You know what? Let's just call it an unidentified furniture object. I might not necessarily know what to call this table, but at least we know that the truth is out there. So I've been wanting to make a table like this for a while. And when I say like this, I mean the bar height slash cocktail table part and not the UFO inspired part. But when Chris let me know he was doing a project with some thick set epoxy, I figured I would come up with a way to incorporate epoxy into this one. Filling knots or cracks is usually the extent of my epoxy pores but I figured I would try something new and see if I could do it in a way that fit into my style of furniture design. So at this point, I've glued up two panels of white oak that will be my top and bottom layers of my tabletop. And I've built a rough shape form out of melamine on top of one of these panels that will hold my epoxy. We used Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy for this, which cures really clear, and you can pour it up to two inches thick. After about 24 hours, we removed the form and the epoxy looked really good. So at this point, it was time to start shaping the tabletop and the first thing I did was cut it into a circle. of my tabletop cut to shape. I then took my other oak panel that I had glued up and cut to rough shape with a jigsaw and glued it to the other half using just the regular high performance epoxy. Once that epoxy had cured, I used a flush trim bit to get the entire tabletop to its final dimension. From there, I used Chris's X-Carve to cut a stepped recess to house some LED lights. That's right, this one not only has epoxy, but it has LED lights too. Pretty sure aliens love LEDs. Oh. Finally, I cut a bevel on the underside of the tabletop, which I started with a router and a chamfer bit, but I eventually decided I wanted that bevel to be a little bit steeper, so I took it to the table saw. I didn't film this part at Chris's shop with my actual tabletop, so here's some footage of me doing the exact same technique on a smaller piece of scrap wood. What I do is essentially use a taller fence, which I can clamp my piece to, and use that to push it through the saw safely. From there, I just keep rotating the piece after each cut until I have a fairly even bevel, then just finish it off with some sanding. And while I refine the shape of this tabletop, let me tell you about a way to refine some other aspects of our lives, and that's with Skillshare, who I want to thank for sponsoring this video. So if you've never heard of them, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. They have classes that cover all sorts of different topics, from things like painting and ceramics, to business strategy and productivity. And with a premium membership, you get unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. One of the classes I found that fell in line with what I'm doing is called DIY Filming, creating pro video with tools you already own. One of the things people often see as a barrier to start creating is the tools needed to actually create. But this class helped show that we're all capable of creating great work with the tools that a lot of us already own. And this is the exact mentality I prescribe to in a lot of different ways, and even in my woodworking. So like I said, there are tons of classes that just about anyone would find interesting. I even found a class that teaches you juggling. 
You don't know how to juggle? Pathetic. Well, I do now. Thanks, Skillshare. Oh man, nice! So right now, Skillshare is giving away a free two month unlimited access trial to our viewers. Then it's only around $10 a month after that. So just click the link in the description box to check it out. All right, thanks Skillshare. Let's get back to the build. So with the tabletop pretty much done, it was time to pack everything up and head back up to my shop to work on the base and get everything finished. Let's go home. To make the base, I of course started with a template, which I traced out so that I could break down my board into rough cut parts that would then allow me to mill each part separately using my six inch wide jointer. With each of the leg parts milled flat, I retraced the template and cut them right to the line to get them ready for flush trimming. One thing I did here was leave extra material on the shoulder area of each leg part and this allowed me to cut in some notches that could be used when clamping the three leg parts together during the glue up. From here it was time to cut the three way joint for the base. This joint might look a little tricky but it's actually fairly easy to cut and I did basically the same thing on my one cup coffee table from a month or two ago which I'll link to in the description but here's how this joint works. If we think of the joint as a circle and divide it into three parts for each leg we can then divide each of those parts in half for each half of each joint and with that we know that our cut angle needs to be 60 degrees. So to make this cut I first make a sled to hold the parts with the joint face parallel to the edge of the sled. I then tilt my blade to 60 degrees and make the first cut on each leg part. For this cut I don't have to hit any specific mark, I just need to make sure that I'm cutting at least halfway up the joint face. From there I just adjust my sled so that I'm cutting the opposite side in the exact same way. And for this one I do need to be accurate with my cut. So what I do is dial it in on my first leg part by sneaking up until both sides of the joint are the exact same width. And once I have it dialed in, I can cut the other two leg parts without changing anything and they should all be good to go. So with that, I can cut in some dominoes which are pretty much only for alignment and I actually don't cut dominoes into one of the joints just to make it easier to get everything together during the glue up. The glue up requires some clamping blocks around the top to get the proper pressure as well as to tighten the clamps as evenly as possible. I'll also add a strap clamp around the bottom of the base to ensure that the bottom of the joint doesn't start to open up. After the glue up I had to get rid of the portion that I left for the clamps so I first needed to trim down my template to get it to fit properly. the top and base pretty much done, the last step was to install the LEDs into the tabletop. I 
then could attach a plywood disc onto the top of the base, which fit into the recess on the bottom of the table. And this would allow the top to be removed if the LEDs ever stopped working. just added some finish and this one was pretty much done. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoy this one. Let me know what you think. Links to everything I mentioned are in the description as well as some discount codes, so go check that out if you're interested. And of course, until next time, if you ever make a piece of UFO-inspired furniture and you're happy with what you've constructed, don't be surprised if they visit you and you're possibly abducted. <laughs>